Let's look at the association tracts now. There are two types, short association fibers, also called U-fibers, and long association fibers. The short association fibers lie immediately under the gray matter and connect adjacent gyri. The long association fibers connect more distant parts of the brain. Let's examine some of them. First, there's the superior longitudinal fasciculus. The superior longitudinal fasciculus connects all four lobes, sending signals bidirectionally, and has three distinct components, SLF1, 2, and 3. SLF1 is the dorsal pathway, running from the superior and medial parietal cortex, around the cingulate sulcus, to the dorsal and medial cortex of the frontal lobe. This serves to feed information related to proprioception, in other words, where limbs are located, to motor regions in the frontal lobe. SLF2, the largest component of the superior longitudinal fasciculus, runs from the inferior posterior parietal cortex, which controls spatial attention and movements of the eye, and goes to the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. Hence, SLF2 helps visual perception of our surroundings. Again, this pathway is bidirectional, so signals in the other direction might help focus spatial attention. SLF3, the ventral component of the superior longitudinal fasciculus, runs from the supramarginal gyrus to the inferior premotor and prefrontal cortex. It is thought to transfer somatosensory information, such as language articulation. There is debate as to whether the arcuate fasciculus is a distinct bundle of axons, or whether it forms part of the superior longitudinal fasciculus. In any case, it bidirectionally connects the posterior temporal cortex and the inferior parietal cortex with the frontal lobe, where it terminates in the precentral gyrus. Importantly, it connects Wernicke's area in the temporal lobe and Broca's area in the inferior frontal gyrus. Wernicke's area is concerned with the comprehension of speech, while Broca's area is concerned with the production of speech. The inferior longitudinal fasciculus connects the anterior temporal lobe and occipital lobe, running along the lateral walls of the lateral ventricles. The cingulum is an association tract that runs underneath the cingulate gyrus along the medial surface of the brain. This tract is found over top of the corpus callosum, beginning in front of the anterior perforated substance and ending in the hippocampal gyrus. The anterior part of the cingulate cortex is important for emotions, especially depression and apathy, while the posterior portion is involved in cognitive functions, such as attention, memory, and visuospatial skills. The uncinate fasciculus's function is unknown, though it might link emotion and cognition, and it might be involved in the semantic processing of language. In any case, it passes across the bottom of the lateral fissure to connect the hippocampus and amygdala in the temporal lobe with inferior portions of the frontal lobe, it is found inward of the insular cortex, behind the external capsule, and extends into the posterior part of the orbital gyrus. The fornix, in addition to featuring a commissural tract, also contains association fibers. It connects the hippocampal gyrus with the mammillary bodies. Make sure to check out part 3 to learn about projection fibers. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, it would help me make more videos, and make sure to comment with any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Also, it would be really nice if you could support me on Patreon. Thank you.